Hello everybody, to introduce myself, my name is Alex, and this is Reef DIY and Whatnot. So, this is my first YouTube channel and video, so any comments down below would be greatly appreciated. And if you're into DIY projects, 3D printing, reef keeping, or fish keeping in general, uh, hit that subscribe button. I think you'll like what I'm, I'm going to provide in the future. So today, I'm going to show you guys my 3D printed protein skimmer. Yes, you heard me correctly, I 3D printed a protein skimmer. So, uh, several months ago, I purchased a Creality Ender 3 uh, for around $200 on Amazon. Uh, my original intent for it was for laboratory work, for making experiments and designing little mounts for probes and various equipment at my lab at school. But I ended up making aquarium stuff with it. So this first thing that I made was my protein skimmer. So that's what this video is about. I'm going to show you about everything. And here, this first photo is actually the CAD program, uh, Autodesk. It's the model that I generated and uh, made over time. And then here's the slicing program, it's called Cura. So it basically just takes that CAD file and makes it into a G code, which is the language for all 3D printers. And then here we have a few photos of the pieces coming off the printer. So on average, each uh, piece took around a day to print. Um, it ranged from two hours, which is uh, the small piece right here, to two and a half days, which was the neck of the whole skimmer. And 95% of all this plastic is PETG, it's all the blue stuff, and that's non-biodegradable, so it's safe in the reef aquarium. And then there's one piece that's actually PLA, which is biodegradable, but that's not going to be in water, so there's no issue whatsoever. So here I'm going to be pointing out the little parts, excuse my hand gestures, but... Um, the diameter of the acrylic tubing I'm showing here is actually 7 inches wide and the height of the whole thing is 24 inches tall uh, when assembled together. So one of the complications I had with this entire build was build plate adhesion. So normally I use uh, glue sticks to stick the plastic down to the um, glass plate that I use when I 3D print and these large pieces started warping because they are cooling too fast. So I ended up switching to hairspray. As you can see on this one piece with the white elbow, um, it's got a little um, warping to it. Um, it's purely a cosmetic issue and not a functional issue. Um, I would reprint it, but it's not that big of a deal in my mind. I can just put it towards the back and away it goes. Um, I'll print it out maybe later, but it's not on the top of my priority right now. But right here, I'm gonna go over the skimmer cup. So. Here I'm taking off the cover. There's a little water and um, some gunk in it just because I've been using it for a while before I made this video. Um, this water bottle that I'm showing you right now with the strawberry on it um, is the type of water bottle that I used on the inner tube that I'm showing right now. Um, I didn't want to buy an acrylic tubing uh, for the inside. I'm in college and I could barely afford all this other stuff and um, I didn't want to buy more plastic that I would only need five inches of and waste the other seven inches so I'm just pointing out that I didn't cut it straight but um, I plan on taking this one out and making a taller one um, here on this cover I reprinted the cover but this was the previous cover um, I made that hole for a little float switch just in case the skimmer overflows or it, to prevent it from overflowing actually and to switch it off and then on the other side I made a soul hall tang which is uh, my favorite tang of all of them and he kind of got screwed up I tried doing my last name on it but ended up giving him a tumor so here's the little uh, skimmer cup. Uh, one of the features I really liked about the new protein skimmers nowadays is that the cup actually just threads off really close, like to the neck. So when you want to perform maintenance or clean anything, you just take the cup off and not half of the neck or the whole neck and then the cup, just the cup. And that was one thing that I really wanted to put on this build. And then there's a silicone O-ring on the bottom of that just to prevent any leaking and um, water getting out. And then here I show that I put some uh, grips on it um, that was one issue with my other protein skimmer is I would always slip on it and I didn't want to replicate that again for another few years now here you can see I show off the neck and there's a shiny substance on it it's actually silicone so for some reason the infill percentage actually allowed water to seep through and I don't know why but I think the layers of the wall weren't thick enough so I just globbed a bunch of silicone on it and rubbed it all over and that's what she said but um it's purely a cosmetic issue at this point like it looks fine to me from a distance it looks perfect if you take the silicone off it it's one of my favorite parts of this whole thing it was a uh, two and a half day print and it turned out perfect so here i'm showing off the air diffuser and how it's linked up to the um 
2,000 liter per hour pump. It's not actually connected whatsoever. It's actually hovering there. The piece is actually the exact diameter of the inside of the acrylic tubing, so it can just sit there. It's, it fits snug as a bug. I just put it in there, and if I need to take it out, I can pull it out easily um, to perform maintenance on this uh, motor. Um, but yeah, just floating there. That way I can lift it up as I please. But here now I'm showing the coupling. So the coupling was actually one of the uh, final pieces that wasn't in the original build of the model. And for some reason, I thought it was a good idea to just put the neck onto the glass or the acrylic tubing and that didn't work out because I needed to perform maintenance on it and having silicone seal it didn't allow that. So I made these couplings that mimic each other. So one coupling mimics the acrylic tubing that goes on the neck and vice versa. And then I used a little bead of silicone just to seal everything. And then there's some stainless uh, bolts and uh, butterfly nuts on it just so I can easily take it off. And then I 3D printed a little wrench to take it off to get in those little tight spaces. So here I'm showing off the base of the whole thing. Originally I didn't plan for the cord coming out on the model of the motor I made. I actually didn't add a cord to it. I just added the pump. So I ended up having to drill a little hole at the bottom of it and if it's snug outside the base of it, it just um, I have to prop up parts of it and I plan on getting some filament that's flexible and putting some uh, little stopper feet on the bottom of it to control the vibration. So here I'm showing off the Venturi valve system. Uh, so basically it just mixes water and air together and then that goes directly into that 2000 liter per hour pump. And then the inlet is a half inch tube which is controlled by that valve up there. And that white piece is actually the PLA that I was talking about earlier. Um, I wanted as much air as possible that way I can dial it down any way I want. I don't have to have a limit. Um, so basically this valve is uh, just controlled by a screw for fine tuning. Um, you take that screw, you turn it right to close the little hole between that uh, half inch tubing and the wall around it to prevent or to allow more air to be in or out. And then um, as you can see on the right of it is a little nipple for a airline to be put on for whatever. So here's just the Venturi and just shows that I'm, uh, it mixes and it gets controlled through there and then it goes straight to the pump. But yeah, that's basically it. It's not too complicated, just a simple um, protein skimmer. I, one of the changes I made eventually was I, on the right, uh, you can see the gate valve that I added compared to the previous picture with the ball valve. But um, that was like 20 extra bucks. But here on this clip is actually 15 minutes after reinstalling it into my sump. Um, you can see it's kind of a tight fit, so that's one of the features I liked about having um, the cup take off. And you can see right now I'm pointing out where the water level is on it. I can take my uh, flashlight and shine it behind it, and I can see through it, and it's transparent. Um, currently, I raised it up around four inches, so uh, the water level, not the actual skimmer. Um, I like to get a lot of wet skimming. I don't like dry skimming. But um, one of the things I've done now is I've replaced the cap with um, a little nicer cover for the... Up. Fits comfortably and then, um, sump. yeah, that's about it. If it's pretty tight in my sump, I didn't actually plan for it to be in my sump. And here's my fish tank just showing off the blues. And so right now I'm going to go over the pricing of everything. So on average, I think the price of the whole protein skimmer itself, excluding the labor and then the protein or uh, the 3D printer, I I say it's around I'm around eighty dollars in. So I have. $40 in filament, which is the plastic rolls that the uh, pro, uh, the printer uses to create things, and uh, each of those are $20, and I got two of them, and I haven't completely used the last one, but I'm just going to count that, so $40. The gate valve itself was around $19, it was on sale, but we're just going to round that up, around $60, and then the acrylic tubing cost, I think it was like $15, um, I think it was on sale. For it was originally like 30 and went down to 15 but um and then if you add like all the little uh, elbows and little tidbits and then the hosing and then all that kind of stuff I'd like round it up to 80 and that's I think that's considerably pretty cheap for a protein skimmer this size and volume um, all the other pieces I had on hand like the tubing and then um, oh, excuse me the 2,000 liter per hour pump Otherwise, most of it's just designing it, and that took maybe a week. I probably went through five different versions of it. The first one was really big and fat and wide, um, and then I figured that wouldn't fit in my sump, and then I tried going tall and skinny, and then I found that nice even mix of uh, wide but 
um, still enough to fit in my skimmer. But if you guys enjoyed this, thanks. Um, leave a comment or some kind of like or just tell me how you liked it or any comments. So thank you. Goodbye.